a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Good afternoon and welcome to this midday prayer coming to you from St. John's Episcopal Church, Princess Street in Edinburgh. I am Theophilus and a member of this congregation. Today we remember Charles I, who became King of Scotland, Ireland and England in 1625, a shy man with refined taste and mild stutter. He was in private life a devoted husband and a loving father. As Supreme Governor of the Church of England, Charles' commitment to its life was wholehearted. <clears throat> Excuse me. He usually began his day with two hours of private devotions, and he loved to attend public liturgy, especially the Lord's Supper. When Charles attempted to impose his religious policy in pity in this kingdom, he faced numerous difficulties. Although born in Scotland, Charles had become estranged in his northern realm. His first visit since early childhood was for his Scottish coronation in 1633. To the dismay <coughs> me, of Scottish Presbyterians and Puritans, who had removed many traditional rituals from their liturgy practice, Charles insisted that the coronation be conducted using the Anglican rite. He also founded our diocese in the year of his Scottish coronation. In 1637, the king ordered the use of a new prayer book in Scotland that was almost identical to the English prayer book, English common prayer. This was met with strong opposition from radical anti-episcopal -episcop elements in the Scottish society and Kirk. Still, for 11 years, Charles counted himself the happiest man in Christendom and with good reason. He had no need to support a standing army or a large navy and therefore no need to sermon parliament. His government was able to meet its needs by exploiting the uh, customary prerogatives of the crown. But behind their apparent tranquility, many of Charles' subjects seized with grievance and when he finally did, finally did call Parliament in England, its members proved militant in their demands for redress and reform. In 1642, he felt he had no choice but to raise the royal standard against them. After three years of civil war, Charles' army were defeated in the field and he was taken prisoner. Parliament wished to reform the Church of England according to Presbyterian model, but Charles refused to surrender episcopacy and the Book of Common Prayer on both sides of the border. An attempt to renew the civil war led the House of Commons to set the king on trial. The tribunal's verdict was a foregone conclusion and Charles was sentenced to death. On January the 13th, 1649, he stepped out onto a public scaffold. I have a good cause, he said, and have a gracious God. I will say no more. But a little after, I go from corruptible to an incorruptible crown, where no d disturbance can be, no disturbance in this world. The king knelt, said a, a brief prayer, then laid his head on the block. He died on the one stroke of the axe. 
as we remember this complicated figure and saint in the church's history, we pray for church unity and we ask forgiveness for all the sins committed in the name of Episcopacy in Scotland. So to our midday prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, kingdom now and forever. Amen. Now let us pray with words from Psalm 80. Give ye, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth from Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the breads of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors, our enemies love among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts, let your face shine that we may be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. It took deep root and filled the land. The mountains were covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. It sent out its branches to the sea and it shoots to the river. Why then have you broken down its walls so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruit? The boar from this forest ravages it and all that move in the field feed on it. Turn again, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine, the stock that your right hand planted. They have burnt it with fire, they have cut it down. May they perish at the rebuke of your countenance. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord of hosts, let your face shine that we may be saved. God of majesty and truth, whose servant Charles Stuart looked to you alone for vindication, grant us faithfulness in your covenant that our offering may proceed from love and our worship may give you glory. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from Wisdom. Listen therefore, O kings, and understand. Learn, O judges of the ends of the earth. Give ear you that rule over multitudes and boast of many nations. For your dominion was given from you, for your dominion was given you from the Lord, and your sovereignty from the Most High. He will search out your works and inquire into your plans, for they will be made holy who observe holy things in holiness. And those who have been taught them will find a defense. Therefore set your desire on my words, long for them, and you will be instructed. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Our 
Our second reading is from Matthew. Jesus said, I see, I'm sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to counsel some flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about who, about how you speak or what you will say. For what you are to say will be given to you at the time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of the Father speaking through you. Brother will be, betray brother to death and father his, his child. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. In this Epiphany Tide, let us commit to the baptismal promises. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. This is our faith. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. With the help of God, let us continue in the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayer. With the help of God, let us continue to proclaim the good news by word and deed seven Christ in all people. With the help of God, let us continue to work for justice and peace, honouring God in, in all creation. This is our task, to live and work for the kingdom of God. Amen. So now let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care 
and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy on us. Blessed Saviour, at this hour, you hung upon the cross and stretching out your loving arms, grant all the peoples of the earth may look to you and be saved for your tender mercy's sake. Amen. this lunchtime prayer we're focusing our prayers on the healing of individuals from illnesses in body mind or soul the healing of society from the diseases of injustice and war and the healing of creation from the wounds we inflict god the father your will for all people is health and salvation we praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Son, you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise you and thank you, O God. Holy Trinity, one God in you will live and move and have our being. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious or despondent, a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress and soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill sympathy and patience. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and holy death and uphold all the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit to those who are bereaved. Hear us, O Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in the life of the nation, 
and in the life of the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. Bring to an end the coronavirus pandemic and protect all key workers on all those who put themselves at risk to support others. Hear us, O Lord of life. End the blindness of hearts and pierce the darkness within us that we may see and recognize you as our God and that we may follow your light alone. Hear us, O Lord of life. You are the Lord who does wonders. You have declared your power among the peoples. With you, O Lord, is the well of life. And in your light we see light. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious. O love our souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless God. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.